Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Aaron Plays. And I hope you're doing fantastically well. In this episode, I'm going to be introducing a game that I've just come through, Dragon Bane, which is a role-playing game. And it's role-playing, it's still, still sealed. So I'm going to be doing an unboxing. What's in the box? Now, there are plenty of, of these unboxings and what's it's on the internet. So what am I doing? What? The main reason, because this is new to me. I watched a, a video of a guy talking about solo role play, and he introduced Dragon Bane, and I thought that looks interesting. But I haven't watched an unboxing. I just saw him talking about the game itself. It intrigued me enough to think, yeah, I fancy doing some solo role play. There is apparently, well, we'll see when we open the box. He did mention there is a solo system inside, but I'll be using um, Roll20 and or what you call it, the Mystic GM emulator, which I'll go through in the next episode of, of this. If I get enough, people say, that sounds interesting. Enough people going, hmm, and hitting that like button. So as, as always, if you can hit the like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and any comments appreciated, that all helps the channel. But let's go down and do, for me, a proper unbox. I've done a, plenty of what's in the box when I've already looked inside the box. I'm going to be doing this one completely and utterly. Wow, what is in the box? Okay, so I'm using a new well, webcam um, rather than mobile phone um, to see how that shoots and such forth. Uh, it's got no zoom on it, unfortunately, or anything like that. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I can manipulate it by hand, such as like this. And there is a little bit of actual sunlight. And then you can see my hands. Woo! Okay, so, yeah, it's all sealed. Look. Everything. What's on the back? Well, it looks like a duck. Now, I did understand that there's a, there's a sort of a rune quest feel to this in many ways. Um, rune quest did have ducks as a character. I don't think I'd have that in the game, but who knows? You know, I'm a little bit older and, 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 and such, so I'm not so stick in the mud as I was. Um, there's a bit of blurb here. Um, and it's got a nice picture of what you should get in the box. But let's actually see what it looks like. So, I have a knife. Yay! Okay, do I actually... Does it work? And it does. Look at that. So, a proper unboxing. Removing cellophane and everything. Yay. So, oh, it's done by a company called Free League. I haven't done anything or had anything from them in the past. Um, never played any of their other games. So... And apparently this is being developed from some Swedish um, game in the past. Um, but yeah, what that actually entails. I think apparently it, came, it was built or made in the early 80s, 82, 83. But this is obviously a brand new rendition. And I think it was kickstarted or, or whatever. I obviously didn't get involved in the kickstart. I only found out about this by actually watching and of course, liking, no hint involved there whatsoever, someone else's channel. So why am I doing this? I am a wargamer. Well, my channel also covers role playing, um, card games, general board games. I mean, yes, it's primarily war games, but I do enjoy a bit of role play. I'm part of a, a group that plays on Monday night. And we alternate again. At the present moment, we're playing Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, not my favourite game, but the other guys like it, so let's play along. And I'm also keen to do something solo. This looks ideal. Um, I also have some... Um, a Traveller is my my main game, and I've got quite a lot of stuff for that, and I play that occasionally on a Monday night as well. So I dabble. In board games, the Monday night group are not interested in board games at all, which is fine because there is more more things out there to play as well. 
Um, I'm doing most of my war games now that I don't have a table. I'm doing them online using Vassal. And if you've seen, I'm doing Panzer Blitz and um, Di Xa, however you pronounce. <laughs> no, no idea. But it's 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 on there. It's the Cry Havoc series continued. So, as I say, this has just arrived. I've just taken off the cover and the cellophane. So, first of all, I like the art. The art the cover art is uh, pretty attractive to me. I do like the look of it. Um, so, oh, it's quite a heavy box. Um, oh, come on, off you come. I suppose this is a problem you have when you do an unboxing and the lid don't want to come off. Anything in the lid? No. Okay. Right. Good job. I ain't going to need that. That can go in the bin. Okay. So some dice. Luminous right now. The one thing I haven't got a shortage of is dice. You know, I've got boxes of the bloody things. Um, however, these are quite nice. And they have, on the on the D20, so this uses, it's a D20 system, but it's a reverse to Dungeons and Dragons, where on the, in this system, low is good. Um, as you can see, that looks like the 20. That's a demon's head. And it's called, you know, rolling a demon. And this is all I picked up from the videos I've watched. And a dragon is a one, which is the best you can roll. And they've got two of those, two D20s, four D6. Always used to have more D6. So it's a nice set. And as I say, I'm going to be playing it solo on the screen um, using roll 20. Won't come into use unless I decide to actually play this live, which might happen. You never know. So nice little set of dice. Okay. A games catalogue. Hmm. Okay. More ways for me to spend oh, Walking Dead universe. Oh, blimey. That's already got me going. Woo. Okay. So there's various gaming options in here. One ring. Yeah. Do we ever get time to play all these games? Probably not. But it's something to spend some time looking in the evening when I've got nothing else to do. Game and catalogue. Some plastic stands. Okay. Quite nice ones. Play through. Play through. Yeah. Not sure how many is in there. Looks like about 10. Cards. Oh. We all like cards. So let me open them up. So I'm going to quickly just pause while I open them. So I've unwrapped the cards. And what, what do you get? Well, first of all, they're nice cards. A nice little hang to them. So we've got treasure cards. Okay. Um, pictures of the treasure. And that's gold coins, copper coins, silver coins, uh, gold coins, uh, 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 a chest. Okay, so that's nice. Improvised weapons. Hmm. Okay. There's quite a few of these. Oh, we've got different words. In, forest. All right, so you've got some product. Cave. In. Uh, okay, so that's the... All right, so can you, I hope you guys can read that. Boiling cauldron. So this is what? In the... Uh, in. Oh, okay. So it's improvised weapons. So I presume right, you can randomly determine which one of these you can use in addition to your normal combat weapons in a, in a combat. So as I said, it says forest, cave, and inn. Very nice. All right. As I say, the cards are really nice quality. Initiative. All right. So I know that, yeah, okay. Initiative is determined each round by a random draw. So I don't know what happens if we've got more than 10 characters involved, but um, initial cards, one to 10. And it goes uh, what the, the rules are on those cards. Again, very nice. So that's pack one. What have we got here? Adventure card. Oh, more treasure cards. I'll tell you what, let's, let's have a look. So you've got adventure. Now, what do these sort of do? Okay, so this is basically a breakdown of the adventures in the game. Which you can probably hand to players, but as I say, I'm going to be doing this solo at present. Who knows? I might do it solo and think that was great. Now let me actually run it on the guys on the on the Monday night. 
More treasure cards. No more treasure cards. In fact, they're all treasure cards. Ah, so we've got gold coins, silver rings, gold amulets, melee weapon. All right, okay. Okay, so quite a few of those to go with those. Very nice. And they will all go in in baggies after I've done this. So, right. So now we come to our first, what's this, getting started. Uh, can I get my minkies in? in oh, right. It is tight to the edge of the book. Right, okay. Uh, oh, oh. oh, the first one's actually just a sheet. So what's this, getting started. Um. All right, so, it's, you know, if, it's, if this is your first role-playing game, well, I'm, I'm a little bit um, around the trees for that one. Then the rules. Again, we've got that picture of that duck. Okay, looks like a duck assassin. Duck assassin. Okay. And how many page law book are we looking at here? 112. Now, I believe this is the rules. It's not like a, a, a dumbed-down version for a starter set, because this isn't a starter set. This is a core set. There's nice artwork in, in the actual book itself. I line up there. Um, so you've got the content. You've got player character content over here. Skills. Combat and damage. Oh, I can actually get that on there. Combat and damage. Magic. Gear. Sort of weapons and such for adventures. It looks like a sort of a, a basic role of how to create adventures and campaigns. Um, uh, a beastery. So everything you sort of expect in a, a role-playing game. You've got the basic history of the place. Um, how to start playing. Measuring time. It's useful. Um, and how to create a character. No idea. I'll be creating a character for my solo game. But um, I believe the game does come with some pre-generated. But uh, yeah, I do like the Rio. Uh, and I say, I do like the art. It's, uh, then you've got, it's a skill, this is a skill-based system rather than a level-based. What's the difference? Okay. With a skill-based system, characters progress slowly so therefore challenges are rather linear rather than dramatically increasing dungeons and dragons is a level based system you start level one characters level two and so on my biggest problem with dungeons and dragons or any level based system is where do all the goblins go you start off with level one character okay and you encounter kobolds goblins and little things like that get to level two there's more kobolds and goblins level three well you're starting to encounter some bugbears and maybe orcs and, and such for but where do all the goblins gone by the time you get to level five and six you're meeting um quite strong powerful monsters but where do the goblins go do they just suddenly decide you know i'm out of here i i can't take on these guys and that's the problem with the level based system in my mind is you start off in an area and you've got your characters are meandering around and you're encountering all these weak kind of monsters and, and, and they're a challenge because you're a low-level character. But by the time you're a high level or medium rate, let's say a level five character in Dungeons and Dragons, you can pretty much, you know, if you meet 10, 15 goblins, you can take them out. It's not a challenge. A skill-based system, the approach, a, a goblin is still a goblin and you'll, probably take him out a bit easier but you're not going to be able to take out three or five or ten of them on your own so your skills increase gradually obviously i've got to read the full details of these rules as i say i've heard it's a, it is a skill-based system um and it's also a low magic which is again something else i like it's a low magic system now i'm at the present moment i i know there is a world that goes with this which i presume will be in this next book um, and I will probably run it in the world. The other idea I was thinking about um, when I when I watched the original preview on this, and I thought, "Ooh, as it's low magic," um, was Joe Abercrombie's um, "The Blade Itself" world, because there's no map for that. 
So you, you could freeform it. So that, that thought did cross my mind. And if any of you guys go, ooh, like, just let, mention it in the comments because it is something that's making me go, maybe. But I think I'll look what's in the box first. So rule book, 112 pages, quite impressive. Now am I going to get this little puppy out? The adventure book. Again, quite thick paperback. This is 116 pages. Also like it, it's got an index. Not Quite a few games don't. Now this, I'm led to believe, is a campaign. Okay, so you've got how you arrive, um, basic story. So I want to run this on myself and then maybe eventually run it on others if I if I ever get that inclination. At the present moment, I'm looking at it as a solo project. Um, and on the Roll20, I have purchased the module that goes with this. So I can play it solo on there. There's ma nice maps. Again, it's nothing new or extraordinary for a role-playing game, but it's nicely done. You know, it's it's making me want to play it just by looking at it. Uh, so that's what made, tempted me to buy it. Anyway, so what's next? Alone in Deep Fall Breach. Now I think, yes, this is a solo dungeon delving campaign for Dragon Bay. So what, what have we got here? This looks like a... Beyond the Breach. So it's what, 16-page booklet? No, 12-page booklet. Now, it used the word campaign. It looks to me like the chapel and the wolf um how to, how the solo rules work but yeah it looks looks to me it's more like a a, a one-off dungeon well, chapel and the wolf your mission so there are missions in it how that will work obviously i'll find out um, i'm not sure if the module on roll 20 actually has this built in i know it had the adventures booklet but i'm not sure if it actually has this in if it doesn't I'm sure it won't be too difficult to make up for the Roll20. So, yeah, a solo booklet. So that's three booklets. Okay, what else is it? Ooh. The campaign map of the area in question. I'm not going to open it fully. What's all this? Special thanks to all oh, these are the backers of the game. Okay, very nice. But yeah, campaign map. It's it's busy. Is my first thought. Um, I'm not sure where the campaign starts, but yeah, it looks uh, quite attractive. Put it down. Can you see it all? Yeah. That looks all right. So, campaign map. Ooh, looks like a tactical map. Well, that's a book. Wow. Okay, I love that. Those look like the pre-trained characters. Get, get, get in the box. So, a tactical map. Small little sheet. That'll do it as a start. And as I say, I'll have that on the screen anyway. Which is two-sided, inside and outside. Okay, so yeah, as I say, if I decide to do this um, with other people, how useful. Right, so there's some pre-gen characters here. Okay, Baston Bloodjaw. Okay, with all the stats on the the other side. So that's the character sheet. Again, just one one actual sheet. Um, not like some, some games, we've got three or four sheets to represent the character. Um, all right, again, I don't know what a lot of these mean. I mean, we've got the basic stats up here. I look at strength, con, agility, intelligence, willpower, and charisma. So change dexterity into agility. Okay, that, that's about the only difference. But... Whereas in Dungeons & Dragons, 
you've got quite a lot of math involved. So you have a, I don't know, plus three modifier for hitting with a sword. You roll a 20. Remember, you're rolling high. 20 plus three, whatever you roll plus three, and then whatever your target to hit is. In this, you've got to roll lower than your skill. And I can see you've got weapon skills here. So you've got an act skill of 14. He has to roll equal to or less than 14 to hit. Then I think you've got things like parries and such forth involved. Um, so he's not so good on the crossbow. You know, knives and slings. Spear, yeah, 14. So he's quite good in some way. And these are his other skills. So you've got things like acrobatics, awareness. So this guy, you wouldn't put uh, like leading the party in a dungeon because, yeah, he, he, he's not going to be able to um, detect things quite so easily. Whereas evades, not too bad. <laughs> bluffing. Yeah, this guy can't bluff. Four. Yeah, he, he's not going to go and start bluffing. So, but that's that's nice. Now, I originally got the Warhammer 4th Edition starter kit, and that had pre-generated characters in it. And the pre-generated characters, you couldn't create using the system. They were too powerful. Um, the stats didn't match up. So I don't know if these match up. I will check them. Um, but the Warhammer uh, Fantasy Roleplay ones, the latest edition, they didn't match up whatsoever. You'd be thinking, how the hell have they got that kind of skills already? Um, so, so you've got Blood Draw. So he looks like he's a bit of a warrior. Halfling. Yeah. Well, a hobbit. I don't think they will call him a hobbit, will they? Uh, he's a, she's a halfling. Oh, that's off the camera. Just a bit. Okay. Halfling. Um, age, young. Profession, thief, yeah, halflings, they're, they're good at that, aren't they? So her skills, so again, combat, eh, not so good. Um, she's not too bad with a knife, but acrobatics, awareness, yeah, she's you know she's quite good on those. And I should just imagine these will obviously improve as you go, go through. There are other things on here that I'm not sure what they do at the present moment. Um, that will come after the, the rules read. And that would be in the next sort of video as I'm actually making up a character or I might pre-make the character up and then explain everything that goes with it. As I say, this is a sort of unboxing stroke preview. Not sure how it all fits together. So you've got willpower and hit points um, and so on. But uh, so, yes, there's a pre-generated, whoops, one too many there. Halfling. Ow, we got the duck. There we go. Macanda of Half Bay. Um, <laughs> honestly, I don't know what to make of it. Um, an armoured duck. And looking at his face, he has a bit of an attitude, doesn't he? What kind of character is that? Player, mallard, adult, profession. He's a knight. A knight. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I should take it seriously or not. I, I can't see me playing a, a, a duck. I'm sorry, but I can fly. I mean, there are arms on the on this on this guy. Does that mean he can fly or not fly? Who knows? Got web feet. Well, they're in, inside inside those steel booties, but. He's got a skill of ill-tempered, <laughs> like Daffy. Okay. Other than that, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, an elf, Ula Moonsilver. The point it is, give it away, don't they? Um, profession Hunter. And that's when you get starting to get, you know, evade skills, hunting skills. Um, swimming is quite good. And good with the bow and so on. Yeah, okay. So that's three. What a four. No. Well, we're gonna so this is was obviously the human. Yeah, I'm giving a few things away there. So we've got Archmaster Odenhan. Looks like a human wizard. He's a mage elementist. Um Appearance, bushy eyebrows, inquisitive eyes. 
And then he's got, ah, you got some spells here. Fireball. Gust of wind. Puff of smoke. Okay. And again, as you'd expect, combat skills extremely low over here. So you're not bad with a stave. Okay. That's, that's your pre-gens. Um, right. Okay. okay. We then got some blank character sheets. And they are blank on both sides. That's fine. I mean, I can use a photocopy like anybody. But that's one, two, three, four, five blank character sheets. I get good paper stock. I, I'm really impressed by the quality. It's not cheap um, and put together, but yeah, very nice. And then for using those plastic stands, you got some standees. Now, a lot of people diss standees. I, I like them. The main reason, yeah, I don't have to paint bloody loads of miniatures. They are there, and I can use standees from other games. Obviously, what looks fell out there, did it? Okay, let's bring him back. I'm back, little chap. Now, I assume these are standees for the adventures that's in the box. Um, and I have seen somewhere that you can buy additional standees and a beastery. But I thought I'd play this a little bit before I start splashing more and more and more money onto it. So... Are they double sided? They are double sided. Um, you know, got a dragon, giant spider, so a manticore, uh, gobos, minotaur, some form of giant. So it's a it's a reasonable selection of stuff there. Um, so yeah, and that is everything around the box. So let me bring you back up to me. I'll, and I'll I'll finish off what I think. Look back at me. Here's the rule book. As I say, that's a, a good bit of reading I've got to do on here. Yeah, I keep looking at the camera because like, the camera's like, oh, gosh, oh, oh. Um, it's not. I've got to talk to the camera, not to the screen. Okay, I'm now talking to the camera. Try not to look to the screen. <sighs> I hope that made you interested in following what I do with this. As I say, I don't have the table space to actually have it laid out on, and such. Well, I'm going to be using um, Roll20 to play the game, um, roll the dice, and such forth. I'm feeling around for, hold on, where is it? And I'll be using this Mythic Game Master emulator to control, well, to run the game for me effectively. Um, I'll go in a bit more detail on this, but effectively you've got stop using the word effectively. You've got what's called a fate chart on here. And this is the brains of the system. I mean there's a, a thought here to describe it. And this is the first edition. There is a second edition out there and I keep thinking, should I get it? Should I not get it? Eh, I don't know. I've been using this so far to play um Better Traveller um, with a group without a GM. And it worked. I've also been using it to use the um, Weird West, or what you call it, Deadlands, without a GM. And it worked. So now I'm going to try it solo and see if it works. The whole main thing is it doesn't mean you don't have to do hours and hours of prep. And that's the one thing that kills me. Time at the present moment is very precious. I think it's difficult to get time to do things like prep and so on. So if this caters for that problem, or solves that issue which it seems to have done so far from a purely solo point of view don't know we'll see i don't i, I might start the game and a session in or two sessions i'll go hmm, a bit bored um hopefully that won't be the case uh but the first thing i'm going to have to do is obviously read that okay so that's going to be a bit of a time time sink what I might do in the meantime is load up another video showing the Roll20 and how it looks and how it works and so forth, and then go into a bit more detail of the emulator. Um, but at the end of the day, this is something I want to play. and I'm prepared to play it solo. What I need to know from you guys, do you want me to bring it to the channel? Do you want me to bring this live? And I can only determine that really from the likes that I get. If I get two likes, I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll just play it and, and, and away I go. 
if I get a lot of likes, then it makes me think, okay. And obviously, recording something does take considerably more effort than just sitting there on my own, playing with myself. Mm. You see what I mean? So that's my unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it. As I've said before, hit the like, subscribe, and all the rest of it. Any comments much appreciated. Let me know what you think. And uh, until next time, I'm lining up the, the buy button. <laughs> Bye, Internet.